Hello everyone, this is a short introduction on our subject decision making in business planning, operations, and control. Okay, now before we discuss what our subject is all about, you know, let's try to review some basic concepts that are relevant in understanding the nature of this subject. Okay, let's start with decision making. Now, this has been discussed already you know, from our previous topics or from our previous subjects. Okay? Normally, when we use this term, we are referring to the process of making choices by identifying a decision, you know, gathering information, and assessing alternative solutions. Take note, okay, there should be the presence of alternative solutions, okay, more than one. Now, because if there is only one, it's not even considered as an alternative no, if you have no option. And at that time, you don't have to make a decision. So if you have more than one option, there are different alternatives. That's the time we make a decision. And when we say a decision, it's only one. Now, if you're going to make a group of decisions, okay, pertaining to different, different uh, set of events, okay, so yun na yung sinasabi natin na choices, okay po? And normally, decision making includes a lot of steps, no, it really depends on the author or who is the instructor, okay, so, ayun, why do we need these steps, okay? Well, number one, decision making is an art, okay? It's based on skill. Pag sinabi natin skill, most of the time, it's procedural, okay? And by doing these steps, okay, or these um, procedures, you will be able to achieve your objectives, okay? So, what are these steps? For classroom purposes, okay, we have five steps, although in some books, there are eight, there are ten, but if you try to read these different books, okay, these five steps is what is common to all of them. Now, number one, okay, there should be a goal. Now, before you make a decision, you have to identify what is your goal, no? And this is one of the most effective decision-making strategies, okay, to keep an eye on your goal. Uh, we are all but humans, di ba? Uh, this is how we behave talaga, eh. Okay, um, especially if we are, ano ba, may bang magandang example? Di ba, like if you are driving, no? You have to keep your eyes on the road, okay? Or let's say if you are running, ganyan, or if you are biking, no? You have to keep your eyes on the direction that you intend to go, okay? So that it will be easier for you to balance, okay? So, the same same thing, no? In business, okay, your goals should be clear so that your actions, no? Okay, whether it's conscious or subconscious actions, man yan, okay, will be geared towards achieving your goal, okay? Ayun, so after identifying your goal, you gather information for weighing your options, okay? Pag sinabi natin options with S, more than one okay so here you have to identify your alternatives and possible solutions okay now after identifying your options or your alternatives okay you should also try to analyze what will happen now what will happen if you choose these alternatives okay so that's when you consider the consequences okay so after identifying step two and step you can now weigh you know, the cost versus the benefits, your pros and cons, okay? And from there, you can now make your decision. But does it end there, okay? Take note, after making a decision, you still have to evaluate whether your decision is effective, okay? This means, okay, pag sinabi natin effective decision, okay, we are referring to decisions which were able to meet the objective. Okay, so, ayun. Now, since a decision, no, once it's already made, okay, most of the time, you're already committed to that. That's why the process of evaluation is very important. No? It will become a learning process for us. So that next time we are confronted with the same problem, okay, you already know how to adjust your actions okay, 
so that your decision will be better. Okay, so those are your five steps. From five, we have four styles. Okay, you have your analytical, directive, conceptual, and then you have your behavioral. Now, when we say analytical decisions, okay, um, paano ba to? Most of the time, analytical decision makers, okay, tend to focus on the cause and effect for their actions. Okay, so after identifying the goal, no? Okay, they evaluate the alternatives based on the cost and effect. Okay, so if this is what I will do, what will happen next? If that will happen, what will I do next? Okay, will I still be uh, working towards my goal? Okay, so you know, if the answer is yes, then this is a good decision. Normally, um, this is what we call, you know, in, in, in some books, no? Or some authors, this is what they call street marts. Uh, yeah, diba? Um, yung mga practical decision makers. Okay, that they based, no? They based their decisions on their, not just on the educational background, but most of the time on their experiences. Okay, so that's how they analyze alternatives. Okay? Directive decision makers naman, uh, most of the time they are driven by um, objectives, okay, and programmed decisions, okay. Um, and normally, these are our, ano ba, middle to top management wherein decisions are already governed by policies and protocols, no? Like, if this will happen, then this should be our decision, ganun. So, in, in other subjects, no? Like, like, for example, in strategic management, Okay, we're in an entity, uh, we're in an entity, uh, let's say, uh, would like to improve its return on investment. Let's use return on investment. And then the process of improving the return on investment is governed by, let's say, a balanced scorecard. Let me write that down, balanced scorecard. Sulat natin dito. Just in case you want to look it up. Balance scorecard. <laughs> Sorry. It's supposed to be balance scorecard. Ayan. Okay. So, you don't need to analyze what will be your next step or what will be your next decision no? if an event comes up. Okay. You just have to look into your manual or your balance scorecard and then you will see, na, ah, okay. So, if this happens, if sales goes up, okay, my next decision or my next move will be this one. So, ganun. In Tagalog, we call it di kahon. Okay, di kahon yung mga decisions natin. Okay, so, yun. And then, number three, you have your conceptual decision makers. Now, when we say conceptual decision makers, they are driven by concepts and theories, no? Like, for example, um, I want to have a profit. Okay, so what will be your decision if that is your goal? Ah, okay, I'm going to operate above the break-even point. So let's compute for the break-even point. Uh, yeah, okay. Based on my capacity, this should be my target sales if this is my target profit. So this will be my quota for, quota for this period. Okay, so, ayun. Parang kabaliktaran ito ng analytical. No? Okay. Um, most of the time, when we say conceptual, merong basis palagi na theory or concept. Like, for example, um, how much am I going to purchase for this month? Okay, ah! Okay. We can apply the economic order quantity. Okay, so, ganon yung conceptual. It's not necessarily bad, no? Okay, um, the the weakness for a conceptual ano, conceptual decision maker is that sometimes okay, they forget not to be uh, to analyze no analyze the existing environment ganun, okay? they tend to forget that the concepts that they are applying okay, is only valid if a certain let's say assumption is true or a certain condition is present just take note concepts lang yan. It's covered by um, assumptions. 
for them to be valid. Okay, so ayun. And then you have the behavioral. This one is self-explanatory. When we say behavioral decision making, or if you are a behavioral decision maker, your decision is based on how you feel. No, ayan. How you behave. Like, like for example, no, in making an investment. No, ayan, investment. Okay. If you are analytical, okay, you're going to consider the risk and return. Okay, in financial management, your return, no, your return should be enough or more, no, more to compensate. Tama? Enough to compensate for the risk that you are willing to take. Okay, but if you are behavioral, okay, um, if it feels good, no, di ba? Uh, dito po mapasok yung gut feel natin. Okay, gut feel. Siyempre, behavioral, ano yung nararamdaman mo, okay? Ano yung sinabi ng puso mo? Ano yung sinabi ng sikmura mo? Okay, so, ayun. Very easy to understand. So, you have five steps, you have four styles, and then you also have your three types, okay? So, what are the three types of decision-making? You have your strategic, tactical, and operational. In some books, strategic and tactical are the same. Although, in some books, tactical and operational are the same. So, ano ba talaga? Okay. It's like this kasi. As to time frame, no? uh, medyo nakakalito tong time frame na to eh. When we talk about decision making, there are two types. You have your long-term decisions and then you have your short-term decisions. You also have your future decisions and your current or also known as ongoing. No? Ongoing decisions. Okay. Um, there's another term for that. Wait lang. Ano na yun? Coincidental. No? You have your coincidental um, decision. Let me explain. No? As to time frame, whether it's a long-term decision or short-term decision, basically, these two are almost the same. Short-term. And your strategic decisions is for long-term decisions. Aha. But, okay, but these two are future-oriented. While this one is for current operations. Okay, or for current events. Sir, what about past events? Pag may future, bakit walang past well, we don't make decisions for past events kasi. No? Like, for example, what will I eat yesterday? Ayun. Or what will I wear last night? Okay, you don't make decisions like that. No? It's always future or current. Okay, so, dun nagkakaroon ng problema. Okay, so, if your decision is future-oriented and it's long-term, no? like, for example, 3 to 5 years, that's considered as strategic decision okay and normally for strategic decisions okay this will answer the question why no, why are you doing this because this is my ultimate goal okay so how are you going to implement that okay or, or how are you going to execute that plan you now have your tactical or operational decision okay so that's why it's short term okay now um, for tactical, normally these are decisions which is good for one year or within the normal operating cycle. It's still future-oriented, but this is the near future, yung tactical na yan. Now, if we're talking about decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, no, that's now your operational or operating decision. Okay po? So, ayun, that's why it's called current. You make a decision based on what is actually happening now. So, like for example, you're into manufacturing, no? And then suddenly, there is an order for a type of product, let's say, for a type of product. And then, you need a module for that. Your decision will be, am I going to make this part or am I going to buy this part? Which I'm going to use for my... Uh, for my products. Okay? So, that's a make or buy decision. That's a uh, that's an example of operating decision. Okay, so 
Ayun. Now, there are other types. No? You also have your programmed and non-programmed decisions. When we say programmed decisions, normally these are the decisions made by the direct directional. Tama ba? Balikan natin. Ayan. Directive decision makers. Programmed. De cajon. Okay, they are already presets. Now, pag non-programmed decisions naman, okay, these are the decisions that is not usual in the operation. They are not programmed. So, as long as you know what is a programmed decision, no, like if this event will happen, this will be my decision. Ganun yung programmed. Anything that is considered as, or anything that cannot be classified as a programmed decision is considered as a non-programmed decision. Okay, so ganun lang siya kadali. And then you have your operational or operating versus strategic decisions. So you have your short-term and long-term decisions. Okay? You also have your organizational and personal decisions. If the decision is for uh, for yourself, you know, or that's a personal decision. But if the decision is for the well-being of the organization, okay, or it represents the decision of the whole entity. It's considered as an organizational decision. I'm go. I'm gonna go back to that. Now let's have to di uh, let's discuss first the individual and group decision. But individual, one person. Group per, uh, group decision. It's a decision of the group. Now let's go back to the third kind. No, because I, I I've seen some discussion now. Uh, all personal decisions are individual decisions. True or false? And now, before you answer that, okay, another question will be, all group decisions are considered as organizational decisions. May dis mag discuss ng ganun eh. Okay? So, ayun, is it true or false? Do you agree? That all personal decisions are individual decisions and vice versa. And then all group decisions are organizational decisions and vice versa. Okay. Not necessarily. Diba? Okay, bakit? Uh, an individual decision okay, can be made by, let's say, a president. Okay, It could be made by a president and that decision will represent the decision of the entire company. So, that is considered as an organizational decision. Okay? So, pwede. But, eto. So, an individual decision can be an organizational. It, call, it can also be a personal decision. But, can a group decision be a personal decision? Hindi. Eto ang hindi pwede. This one. Diba? Um, common sense, no? Common sense. Anyway, so dito lang naman tayo nagkakatalo. Ito yung nakakalito. So all organizational, um, all organizational decisions are group decisions. Pwede. All group decisions are organizational decisions. Pwede. Now I'm saying pwede. Okay? Kasi pwede rin hindi. Okay? Because you also have these individual decisions which can also be organizational decisions. Now, if, if you have a comment to that, no, please feel free to write your comments in the com comment section in our discussion page. Okay, so ayun. Let me know what you think. Um, as a continuation no, in the concepts, okay, what about business? What is a business? Nagamitin natin to ng ilang beses. When we say business, we could refer to the entity. We could also refer to the activities of that entity. Okay. Now, feel free, no? Feel free to to screenshot. Okay. That's why I'm a big fan of recorded discussions, no? Using PowerPoint because, uh, number one, anytime... You can take a break. You can just pause. No, you can download this. No, well, of course, you can also view no videos coming from the big blue button, okay, and from Zoom. But 
um, discussions recorded in recorded and uploaded in YouTube no you can download in your device and you can watch it in your free time no? diba? Ayun. and then because of the because of the uh, video is only composed of slides that are being shown you can you can just pause no and then screenshot now you have a you have your notes already okay so ayun now let's continue uh what about planning okay planning is actually a function of management that involves setting objectives okay? very important and determining a course of action Ayun, for achieving these objectives. Uh, this requires managers to be aware of environmental conditions facing their organization and forecast future conditions. Now, when we say functions of management okay, from other subjects, okay, still remember the different functions of management. This is the first one, diba? Right? You have planning, leading, organizing, controlling, decision no it's not decision making directing motivating and then you have decision making okay so uh, if you try to read basic management books okay normally this is chapter one chapter two three four five and so on and so forth which gives us a notion that the last function you no know, for management is decision making because as presented, no, you cannot lead, okay, immediately you have to plan first, and then you organize, ganun, and then you control, and then you direct and motivate, and after that you make decisions. Hindi po ganun. Decision making is actually integrated in these other functions. So, you can already make decisions as early as the planning stage. Okay? So, Ayon. Now, when we talk about objectives naman, okay, there are different types of objectives okay, in terms of business. Um, what are the basic objectives? Okay? First, you have your um, most common, no? profit maximization. Maximization of profits. And then, okay, in financial management, there's a better objective, no? um, better than maximizing your profits. Is the maximization okay, of shareholders' wealth. Okay. Shareholders' wealth. Ayan. Oops. Mali mali. Ano bang mag erase dito? Ayan. Shareholders' wealth. Okay. Which can be indicated. Which can be indicated by the fair market values of their stocks if they are publicly traded okay and then in strategic management naman others a better there's a better objective than maximizing profits or maximizing shareholders wealth and this is maximizing okay, maximizing the strategic value strategic values Now, let's try to discuss. When we talk about profits, this is basically the difference of revenues and expenses. Okay? Of course, it's measured in terms of profits. I, uh, money. Uh, the thing about maximizing profits is that it, it, it fails to consider the element of risk, timing, and, and cash flows. Okay? That's why in financial management, this one is better okay? because... It considers risk, okay, and the return trade-off. Also, the timing of cash flows. Ayan. But still, it's measured in terms of money. Now, a lot of analysts would say, ah, ito mas maganda. Because it includes, okay, the value includes um, things that are measurable and not measurable in terms of money. Okay? So, it's not just profits. It's not just the stock values but it also includes uh, let's say the quality of leadership the relationship with customers okay so and the credibility of the policies and so on and so forth okay that is part of the strategic value okay so let's continue four types of 
plans. Okay, you have your operational planning, strategic, tactical, and contingency planning. When we say or operational planning, okay, these are the ano ba? These are the plans, okay, that answers the question: How are you going to do things? You know, okay, how are you going to do this so that your main main objective will be achieved? Okay, so. Ayun, strategic naman, hmm, mali, no? Dapat ito yung nauna. Okay? This should be number one. Strategic plan. A long term, it answers the question, why? Okay? Um, why are you doing this? Because this is my objective. Okay? Why does, uh, why do you need to do this plan? Okay? Why do these things have to happen? Ayun, because this is my objective. Then, after answering the why, you know, answer the how. So, how are you going to uh, go about it? Okay, you, know, you come up with your operational plan. Which is almost the same with tactical planning. You no, know? Tactical planning. It's just that uh, tactical planning is also similar to strategic planning. The only difference is that what drives them. Your strategic planning okay, is driven by your long-term objective. While your tactical plan, okay, is driven by short-term objective. So, how do I simplify this? For example, for someone who wants to be a, let's say, a liar, a lawyer. Lawyer. Okay, for someone who wants to be a lawyer, okay, syempre, your long-term objective will be, I want to pass the bar exam. Okay. So, what's the short-term objective? Okay. I want to pass my undergraduate subject yeah, and my law subject. Not just to pass, no, not just to pass, but also to learn. Okay, so that's your tactical plan, di ba? I'm going to learn this subject and, um, and so on and so forth. Um, in your operational plan, okay, you're going to emphasize how are you going to do that, no? Okay, I'm going to read... Let's say two to three hours every day for this subject, for my major subjects. So, ganon, okay? Let's call that number three. And then you have your contingency planning. When we say contingency planning, this is when you consider your what ifs, no? And your just in case. And so, what if this will happen? No? What if I failed uh, this? A subject what will I do next one of the common errors you know, that decision makers do is that uh, they come up with their plan B by adjusting the objective hindi dapat ganun you adjust the action not the objective what do I mean no? for example no, um, since I'm teaching in the college of accountancy I see students saying I want to be a CPA I want to pass the CPA board exams no now, if I have to pass that, then I should be able to graduate Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. So, if I failed okay, in my major subjects, my plan B will be to shift na lang. Okay, and I will just take something else. Okay, so, they adjusted the objective. Okay, mali. Dapat, if you fail, you have to adjust the action. Okay, so my one or two hours every day did not work. Okay, maybe I have to increase my efforts to uh, three to four hours every day. Uh, and maybe I have to sacrifice some things and so on and so forth. You, know, you adjust the action but not the objective. Okay, although, syempre, uh, we all have our limitations, no? okay, internal and external limitations you know, when we say um, internal limitations, syempre, for a student, no, let's just follow the, the example, no, because sabi nga nila in management, what is applicable on a personal level, most of that is also applicable on an organizational level. Okay, so maybe let's say the student has a lot of problems, okay, uh, there are financial limitations or mahina talaga yung utak. Or maybe external limitations, no? Um, uh, he's living in an environment which is not conducive, no? For learning, okay? So, ayun. 
So as of this point, what I want to emphasize is, okay, under contingency planning, you come up with your plan A and plan B. Make certain adjustments on the action, no? But not on the objective, okay? Last resort lang yun, no? If you change your objective. Okay, uh, five essential steps in planning. Number one, you establish your objective, okay? Sounds familiar, no? Parang sa decision making din, okay? There should be a clear goal, and then you determine the necessary actions, okay? What are the things that you need to do? And then after identifying no, the things that you need to do so that you will meet your objectives, you're now going to evaluate your resources, okay? And capabilities. Now, when we say resources, most of the, ta of the time, we are pertaining to your four Ps, okay? So what are these four Ps? Again, if you remember, you have your... No, it's not four piece. Mali, it's a marketing yan. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be 4M. Ta-da! Okay, so, uh, ano yung 4M na yan? You have your materials. Okay, now we're just pertaining, we're not just pertaining to materials for production here, you know? We are actually pertaining to your basic input in your operations. Oh, yan. Okay, so you have your materials, you have your manpower, okay, you have your machineries, and then there's one more. Ngayon, dapat nagkodigo na lang ako para ma hindi ko makalimutan. Eh. Materials, manpower, machineries, and there's one more, money. No, it's not my, it's, it's methods. Tara methods okay or your intangibles no like your policies your softwares okay so ayun in some books we have 5 m's because you have money okay, naalala ko lang yung money pero take note money if you use that it will become one of your 4 m so i i prefer to use 4 m's so you evaluate no needed versus available standard versus your actual okay not just your resources but also your capabilities no what you can do this is your this is the actual of what you can do versus what you should be able to do okay so there will be a gap no you try to address the gap okay or you can adjust the action but never adjust the objective like like for example if for a certain action or for a certain plan um, to be executed, no, to be executed, you need, let's say, um, 500,000 pesos, but you only have 400,000 pesos, okay, so, how do you address that, no, it's either, no, it's either you loan, ayan, additional financing of 100,000 pesos to meet 500,000 pesos as for your budget, or you adjust the action, no, so that the required 500,000 pesos will go down to 400 pesos. Um, use resources that are ano ba, affordable. Kumbaga. Okay? So, ayun. Now, aside from that, no? For example, um, we're not just talking about money here, no? Well, sometimes, time is also very important. No? Okay, so, you only have, let's say, uh, 500 machine hours. No, you only have 500 machine hours, but for you to meet your quota, okay, for you to meet your quota, you need to operate uh, 600 machine hours. O, diba? So, paano yan? Okay, you can add machine machines or you adjust the action. Okay, you can work overtime. Okay, so ganun yun. Now, once you have addressed the gap, okay. It's time for you to execute the plan. And take note, periodically examine the plan, okay, if you're still working within the uh, plan, no? Um, here, ap applicable po yung natin dito, if you still remember, the PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, and act. Okay, act on the difference. You plan, okay, then you execute the plan by doing the plan. And then you check if you're still doing what is actually planned. 
Okay, if there is a difference between what you are actually doing and what you have planned, then you have to act on it. And then you adjust your plans. Okay, so ayun, this PDCA cycle, also known as your Deming wheel, okay, is part of our discussion in total quality management in our previous previous topics or previous subjects. There you go. Still a continuation. So you have business operations. Ano ba yung natapos na natin? Okay. Our subject is decision making in planning, operating, and controlling. So we already discussed decision making. We already discussed planning. Now we are in operations naman. When we say operations, we are referring to the set of activities activities okay, that we do on a daily basis so that our objectives will be achieved. Okay, so, ayan na. Okay, let's try to read this. Sabi niya, to increase the value of the enterprise. This is maximization of uh, shareholders' wealth. When we say value, most of the time we use that symbol. Okay, and it's indicated by the market value of the company. And earn a profit. Ito yung pinaka-basic profit maximization. Okay. And these are, ah, ano to? Looks familiar, di ba? Saan ba nang galing ito? This is your value chain analysis. Now, let me discuss this. Okay, let me discuss this. Uh, I think this one is from Michael Porter. Originally, originally there are six activities here. Um, dapat my research and development and then it goes to sampling, production, prototyping, parang ganun. And then mass production, sales, etc. And then after sales service and then the output of the service or after sales service, especially this one, customer service focus, you know, will now be an input for the research and development. So they will continue improving the process. Okay, this shape right here, you know, if you look at this shape, originally it's not like that, no? Okay. Yang shape na yan. In some books, the shape is like this. Oops, sorry, sorry. Let's try to erase that. Dun, 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 dun. You expect from my videos that there will be a lot of errors because I don't edit my videos. No? Um, chill, chill lang. No? Ayan. Kung nagkamali, i-correct ko na lang sa discussion. Ayan. Ayan. So, so parang ganyan. Kung may ulo siya dito, parang may puwet din dito. Parang arrow lang ba? Okay. So, if I draw that again, hindi kasi ako ganun kagaling mag-drawing. This is what you call chevron. That shape is called chevron. Okay, in in flow charting, this represents a process, no, a process with an output. Yan yung output niya, and the output will be an input to another process. This one right here, it means that there is a required input from another process. So, kung marami siyang ganyan, these are two processes wherein the output for process 1 is the input for process 2. So, this one is actually one process wherein the output of this process will be an input to another process. Okay po? So, ayun. Now, let me explain this further. No? These are the activities. Okay? Normal activities in our operations. Nasa business operations na tayo eh. Why is this divided into two? These activities right here, okay, below, these are called your primary activities or value-adding activities. Okay, any investments made okay, to improve your activities found on this area right here will, in, will improve the value of the company or the value of your product. Okay, so these are your primary activities and they can exist, no? They can exist without the support activities. Ayan. Okay, without the support activities, you can still deliver what is needed. Okay, needed from this process. Ayan. 
So for example, uh, this is your ultimate ultimate process. Now you can still deliver what is needed by your customers even without the support activities. But okay, so that these activities will be improved, okay, you still need this. Yeah? If you want to improve these activities, there should be a firm infrastructure, HR, technology development, and procurement. Okay, so yun yung mga support activities natin. Um, if you invest, no, invest time, effort, and money in these activities, it will not improve the value of your product. Okay, that's why they are called support activities. Okay, um, for example, you have human resource management. Oh, ayan. Um, if you increase the, let's say, increase the salary of the HR, or if you invest more on finance and legal planning or in management, ayan, operate, um, sa operations tayo, ha, will that improve the value of your product? The answer is no. Okay, so you cannot just increase your price, no? Para bawiin yung mga, no? Well, of course you can, pero parang, eh, hindi naman nag-increase yung value. But let's say, no? Let's say you are in the tech industry and then you invested on research and development, okay? You try to improve on, let's say, materials, handling, o, oh, ayan, uh, the delivery process. This will basically improve the value of your product as perceived by your customers. Yun yung primary activities. So, if these are your value-adding activities, nasa baba, these are now your non-value-adding activities, your support activities. And again, these activities, no, originally, the shape is parang chevron din. Dapat ganyan yan. Because the output of this activity will be the input for this process. And so on and so forth. And so if you try to read the book of Michael Porter on value chain analysis, that's how it was explained. So sir, ano naman yung margin na yan? It's like this kasi this area right here, okay, this area, support activities and primary activities, all of this will incur cost to us. Okay? Lahat yan, my cost. But, take note, as part of your primary activity, di ba, you're going to create sales. Okay, so ito na yung total revenue natin up to this point. So the difference, no, of the revenue coming from your activities versus the cost coming from your activities will now be your margin or your profit. Okay, so the more cost invested or incurred in these activities, ayan, liliit na ang liliit yung margin natin. Okay, yun. Okay. Unless you increase the sales, okay, or or your revenue. Okay, so, ayun. Anyway, we are not going to discuss this, that, discuss this in our subject because it's already discussed in other subjects. Okay. Instead, let's just try to review the different business operations in different industries. So, what are these? Let's start with this one. This one is very easy, okay? Service industry. You know, uh, like professional industry, you know, in sa legal, uh, accounting services, medical services, okay? Yung pinakamadali dito, um, wash, dry, and fold, car wash. You know, you, you get the picture. Okay, what we are selling is our service. Okay, um, education, no, ayan. When we say retail, this is now your merchandising companies. They buy what they intend to sell. Okay, but if you make what you intend to sell, you are now in the manufacturing industry. Okay, and then you have your technology industry. Dati wala ito eh. Okay, this is our basic lang. Because technology industry is normally part of your service industry. But then there are hardwares, no? Hardwares that they buy and sell. And then some, they are into manufacturing. Okay? Pag minsan, they are integrated, no? Yung hardware nila, may nakalagay na na software. If your product is a software, or what is that? Is that a service? Or is that, uh, is that part of your 
product, hindi kasi siya tangible. Parang ganun. So, medyo nakakalito. Hindi, ganito na lang ang gawin natin. Sabi ng mga analyst, let's come up with another industry and let's just call it technology industry. <laughs> Ayun. Now, how do we improve business operations? Ayun. So, that is now your answer. Um, number one, Keep measuring your performance because you cannot improve what you cannot measure. Try to quantify things, no? Okay. From there, you will know what to do okay? so that you can know what to control. You remember your PDCA cycle? Try to keep up with the latest trends on how to improve your performance and then streamline your process. Okay. Um, in some subjects, we have this concept of re reengineering. Try to reengineer your process. Okay, by reengineering, you try to remove actions, no, or procedures that are not contributing to the improvement of the value of your product or services. And meron din tayong TQM. Yes, you have your total quality management. They're almost the same, no? It's just that this one is more, ano ba, evolutionary, okay? You try to evolve your processes. Uh, Reengineering is more revolutionary because you are going to remove the entire process and then, uh, you know, you start with a clean sheet of paper. Try to identify the processes that are necessary to come up with the output. Okay, so if it's not needed, don't put it in your process. So, ganun lang. We are almost done, no? Uh, feel free to pause the video or take a screenshot for your notes. Ayan, and then, as a continuation, you have your control. Okay, tapos na tayo sa planning, operating, now let's go to control. So, what is control or business control? Normally, we are pertaining to processes and procedures that regulate, guide, and protect and organization okay it is one of the four primary actually it's not just for a so you have your planning organizing and leading you also have your and controlling directing motivating and decision making okay so ayun, um this is when you try to apply you know this concept no carrot and stick okay you make it explicit what should be done and what should not be done so um, what should be done should be emphasized or rewarded and what shouldn't be done diba? should be ano ba may tawag doon eh discouraged oh, yeah. so carrot and stick approach now you also have your management by objective and management by exemption under management by objective, all actions no, should be geared towards the attainment of your goal. Any actions that does not contribute no, to the attainment of your objective should be eliminated or reduced. That's management by objective. If you try to apply that, that's already part of the controlling process. And then MBE naman, management by exception, you try to manage, okay, the output that is way above or way below what is expected. So, that's what you call management by exemption. Dito po pumapasok yung variance analysis, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, what's the decision-making time frame? This was already discussed earlier. You have your long-term and short-term. And then, from other books, they have the intermediate, no? Something that is between long term and short term. Bakit may intermediate? Ganito kasi yan. Okay? The time frame is subjective. What may be long term for you may be short term for me. It really depends on the operating cycle. No? Um, let's have an example. Um, let's say, ano ba yung business natin? No? Uh, let, let's talk about sales na lang. Let's talk about sales. Let's say you're selling the basic commodities. No? Normally, short term is one year. Yan. Long term, long term, three. Three to five years. 
Okay, so yun, kung ganun yung inventory mo. But let's say, ano, let's say, your inventories are real properties. Now, I'm saying inventories, ha, not, uh, not just an agent. Pag agent kasi, you don't have the inventories. But if you have the inventories, no, let's say you are a developer, you purchase a big chunk of land and then you develop that and then you sell that piece by piece, no? Pwedeng subdivision, ganun, or pwedeng cemetery, <laughs> Hindi, joke lang. And subdivision na ganun. So, um, ang operating cycle mo, pag minsan, 3 years, short term na yun, eh, abot ka ng 5 to 10 years. Okay, so that's your normal operating cycle. So, you see, yung 3 years, for someone who's selling commodities, that's already long term. Okay, but for someone whose inventories, no, are real properties, three years is short term. So, ayun. That's why they put intermediate, no? Bakit? Kasi yung mga alanganing long term or short term. Okay. So, from there, we can now discuss the nature of our subject. Grabbing introduction para lang maka-introduction, ano? Okay, our subject is not just focus on planning, operating, and controlling. Actually, our focus is on decision-making. Decision-making that is guided by concepts, no? guided by concepts, and guided by tools in decision-making. This is actually what we call the decision-making trinity. Bakit ganun? You can make decisions based on concepts, no? You can make decisions based on concepts but without having the tools, or if you don't understand the tools, okay, in decision making, you might come up with the wrong decision. No? Bakit ganun? Kasi you will not be able to quantify. Like, like for example, talking about investments, okay, you know the concept na, ah, the higher the risk, the higher the return. Okay, so if I am willing to take this much risk because I am a risk taker, then I'll be able to get higher returns but then question okay how do you quantify the risk and how will you quantify the return diba? so ayun you can also have the tools no okay you may be able to no, uh, ano ba? use or not just use understand these tools you know? you know how to use these tools in decision making but if you don't know the concept behind these tools you might come up with a wrong decision like for example, you know that the you know how to use the economic order quantity, okay? Your break-even point and so on and so forth, okay? So you're able to compute for reorder point. You were able to compute for the, the margin of safety and so on and so forth. So you have the tools, but what do these numbers mean? Diba? yung mga changes kanyari sa numbers na to, okay? Yeah, so, you have the tools, but you don't know the concepts, you may come up with the wrong decision. And then, what's the point of knowing the concepts, okay, and mastering the tools if you're not going to come up with a decision? Siyempre, there should be application. Okay, so this is now our subject. We try to understand concepts and tools, okay, conceptual tools, I will discuss that later, so that we can come up with the correct decisions. Okay po. So, ayun. Now, let's continue. Okay. Review of concepts. Let's talk about the difference of theory, concepts, and law. When we say theory, normally, it refers to untested hunch or a guess without supporting evidence. Diba? Parang kwan lang yan eh. Parang, ano ba to? Um, example ng theory. Theory of evolution. Theory of Relativity. Tama ba yung example ko? In science kasi, it's uh, the opposite. Eh. Pag sinabi nating theory, it's already tested and there are already a lot of manifestations. But in business, okay, most of the time, we use the term theory if this is just an untested hunch. And it's not applicable to all entities. No, It may only be applicable to a certain aspect Ayan, nandun pala, in a certain aspect in the natural world. Uh, ayon. 
So that's beauty. Now, if a beauty is somehow proven no, to a group of individual, and then there are a lot of manifestations na, okay, that suggest that that beauty may be true, we, co we already call it a concept. Okay, so it's now a general idea about a thing or group of things derived from specific instances. Okay, so, ayun. Now, if, ayan, if it's already applicable to all without exemptions, it's no longer a concept but it's already considered as a law. Normally, we use the theory to um, explain the law. No? Like, like for example, anything that goes up will eventually come down. No? Law of, in physics, law of gravity. O, di ba? Eh, bakit kaya ganun? Okay? What you throw up in the air will go down. Okay? Well, we have the theory of, ano ba yung mga theory that supports uh, that law of gravity? You have the theory of um, the gravitational pull by by Newton. Ayan. 